All right, ladies and gents, uh, let's talk about uh, these notes. Now, before we get into the notes themselves, um, let's talk about the relationship behind the notes. I want to try to give you maybe just a little better um, sense of what's going on. Uh, so, so at this point, uh, we've been dealing with this configuration. You have like these two lines, and then you have this transverse that kind of crosses it um, at its different, uh, you know, its different directions. So the PQ lines and the RF lines. There's nothing special about them. They're not anything. Um, they're not any kind of like special condition or relationship. They just kind of be happening to go in the same direction. Then you have this third line that kind of crosses a different direction. And so what you've been able to do up to this point is give these things names. Uh, let me switch back to that. I just want to go transparent for a second. And so like if uh, the practice I had you do up to this point, um, you can certainly recognize like these two green angles as being like corresponding angles. I'm just going to dot them because they're in the same relative position. Uh, if I look at alternate exterior, it might be something like uh, this purple angle and this purple angle because they're on either side of the transversal outside the lines. Uh, we have alternate interior, so stay inside the lines but cross over the transversal. Um, and then of course we have corresponding. Let's go with corresponding. Let's go. Let's go just regular black ink. And corresponding, there's lots of different examples, uh, but the point of corresponding is that they happen to be kind of the same relative position. And it's so like this angle and these this angle will be um, corresponding because they're both kind of like upper left. Um, and so really that's all we've been able to do is give it a name. Um, and the reason the, the reason we can only give it a name is because, well, these lines that they're attached to, the top and bottom lines, there's nothing special about them. They just happen to be existing and kind of running in the same direction. And so the question we should ask, pose, uh, ask now is what happens uh, if instead of just being random, we make these lines um, do something special. Um, and really, because they're lines, all we can really do is try to make them perpendicular, which isn't that interesting. But what if we uh, kind of change the orientation of this line until it's parallel? Uh, let me move that. So it'll be easier to see. Okay, so if you notice, like that, we have the Vs. And so as we take this line from here to here, um, you can certainly notice the angles are changing. Let me bring up the details here. Um, and so we have these details where you can see, of course, the vertical and like the linear pairs in action. Um, but as I'm moving this line or even moving the transversal line, um, all the angles are changing. And so the thing I want you to notice is what happens if I bring this up to parallel. It's going to snap here. Watch this. Snap in place. Um, now we have these angle pairs. So a couple observations you can make right off the bat. Uh, one, if you look at the angles in this cluster and the angles in this cluster, they're actually now the same value. Um, even as I'm moving this transversal, of course, they're all 90s there. Um, but if you look at the clusters, um, you can hopefully notice um, that the clusters themselves uh, now share the values. And so the angles that were just simply corresponding because they happen to be in the same location, well, now they're corresponding and they're congruent. Um, alternate interior angles here, same deal. That now they not just have the name alternate interior, but now they're going to have the same value. No matter where that position is, alternate interior angles seem to have uh, congruency going on. Um, alternate exterior, um, outside and hopping over the transversal, whether it be at the 120 or the 60, again, those are going to be the same. Even if I change it to position, alternate exterior, now the same. Um, and then consecutive interior, and that's probably the weird one, inside the line, same side of the transversal. Um, they're not actually going to have the same value, um, but if I move this into a more advantageous position, we can see if we add this angle to this angle, um, we're going to have a supplementary pair. Um, and so that's the thing I need you guys to add today. It's not a huge leap because you've been spending so much time just recognizing them. Now the question you have in your head is what happens if I take these, uh, these lines that have been crossing the transversal and I make them not just kind of random, but instead, boom, parallel. Immediately what happens is we do have now special angle relationships. Um, just uh, in terms of like just quick, 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 quick review. Uh, let me go back to my transparent background. Just to highlight some of these angles that I've been talking about. Um, if I want alternate exterior, um, it could be like, I'm going to make this big sweeping arc here. Uh, it could be this guy and this guy. Um, those are alternate interior, also the 70s. But if you notice right away, they're going to be congruent. Um, if I'm looking at alternate interior, so hopping over the transversal but inside, um, those are also going to be congruent. They have the same exact value. Um, if I look at um, corresponding, so same relative position, upper right, upper right, so above the line to the right of the transversal, um, those are going to be congruent as well. And the one kind of weird one is what happens if I have the same side um, but inside the lines. Well, it looks like those are going to have a kind of a different relationship. Those are going to be supplementary. And so that's the part I want you to practice. What happens if those lines happen to be parallel? Okay, so let's drop this. Let's go to the notes. Okay, 
okay, so let's bring back this guy. Okay, um, so now the question, and these should be pretty, they should be at least relatively quick here. Um, what happens if I make those lines parallel? So let's get that information down first. Um, so as long as you have two parallel lines, or I'm sorry, as long as you have two lines cut by a transversal, oh, let me get to a pen. Uh, so you have two lines cut by a transversal. Uh, then you have, and these are all the angle pair relationships, you have corresponding. Um, you have alternate interior. You have alternate exterior. Um, then you have consecutive interior angles. Okay. Um, and so the thing I'm trying to remind you is that the names are just names, and they don't actually have like those relationships unless those angle those lines happen to be parallel. And that's what's kind of going on in the second statement. Um, but if those lines, the lines I'm mentioning here, are parallel, okay, remember the marking for that is two slashes, then those angle pairs have a special relationship. In other words, um, you can create an algebraic equation from them. Um, again, kind of thinking about what we saw here, um, those two lines are parallel. It's cut by a transversal. Now, the angles that we could just say are corresponding before now are congruent. Um, the, the angles that we could say are like um, consecutive interior, now supplementary, and so on and so on. Okay, so if we go back to like that notion, okay, if two lines are cut by a transversal, and the, as you can kind of see these examples down here, um, we're going to have basically just a couple different relationships. Um, we, we can definitely say um, that corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so remember, that's a, that's a uh, symbol for congruent, which means they have the same measurement. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Um, alternate exterior angles are congruent. And now this is going to be kind of the weird one. Consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Um, which means they add to 180 degrees. So we have something plus something equals 180, okay? Um, so we can immediately put that to use. And so take this first example. Um, please notice first that the angles themselves are, I'm sorry, the lines themselves are parallel. Um, therefore, we can actually state an angle relationship. Now we have to identify these two angles, but if you look at where they're located, kind of upper right and upper right, um, these are corresponding angles. And so the corresponding angles postulate, and please recall that a postulate is just like a rule, um, states that if two lines are cut by a transversal and they're parallel, then corresponding angles have to be congruent. And so that's going to be the relationship we'll take advantage of. Now, congruency just means they're equal. And so if we look at the two angle values, one is 17x minus 4, this guy, um, and the other one is 12x, or I'm sorry, 12 plus 15x because cor the corresponding angles postulate says those angles are congruent, okay, that means they should be equal. And if they're equal, I should be able to solve this guy out. Now, this is just a matter of algebra. Um, so 17x on one side, 15x on the other. Let's subtract 15x on both sides. And so this is just uh, the algebraic finish here. Uh, so that'd be what, 2x minus 4 is equal to 12. Okay. Um, so we add 4 to both sides. Um, so that's going to give us 2x equals 16, divide by 2s, and so x equals 8 in this case. Um, and so now the, the names that you guys have been practicing up to this point now are going to start giving us a relationship, um, namely giving us an equation that we can actually solve. And so because the lines are parallel, and I can't stress that enough, the parallelism is what drives this, um, we can say that these corresponding angles are congruent. Congruent gives us an equation. Equation gives us an ability to solve an algebraic problem. Um, so here we have the same type of thing. First, please note that the, the lines here are going to be parallel. Now we have to identify the types of angles. Well, they're both on the inside, but they're on the same side of the transversal. They're both kind of on the right side of the transversal. And so these are going to be um, consecutive interior angles. Okay. 
Now, that's just a name, um, but the theorem behind it, and again, remember, theorem just means rule, is that consecutive interior angles, if we look right here, consecutive interior angles are supplementary as long as the lines they're attached to are going to be parallel. And so if supplementary, in this case, means 180 degrees, and so we have two angles being added together to make 180, the two angles in question are going to be the ones up here, so that's going to be x plus 67 for the first one, and the x plus 127 for the second. And I'm getting those right off of the diagram itself. The lines are parallel. These are consecutive interiors. Consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Supplementary means they add to 180, and so I can create this equation. Now I just got to solve it. And so I have an x and I have an x. That gives me a 2x. I have a 127 and a 67. So if I add those together, let's see, that's 14, 6, 7, 8, 9, carry the 1. So that's going to be 194. And so now in terms of solving algebra, I'll just divide by 2. And so x is going to equal, let's see, 18, 4. So 90, x is going to be 97 in this case. Okay. Um, Okay, um, and so kind of moving on to this, um, here we have some conditions kind of written out for us, um, but we do have parallels here, um, so we can even add those if we wanted to to our diagram. M is parallel to N, and so we have these two are parallel, and then R is parallel to S, um, so now we can actually use this diagram to solve some math here. Um, we're told the measurement of angle 1, and that's what the M means, is 130, and so this guy is equal to 130 degrees. Um, now we can try to find 2 and 3. Well, if you look at the, the placement of these, 1 and 2 on the lines that are parallel are corresponding. And so that means this has to be 130 degrees because corresponding angles are congruent. Um, if you look at the other two lines, let me try to highlight them here. Now these parallel lines cut by this transversal, those angles are, are, are in between the pink lines on the same side of the dotted line. So these are going to be supplementary, meaning they're at 180 degrees. And so that's going to be 50 degrees. Okay. Um, and so, like, the big takeaway here is if you just have two lines cut by a transversal, nothing special about the lines. You can simply call them certain names, corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, consecutive. But if those lines are parallel, and that's a big takeaway here, if they're actually parallel, then you can actually take it a step farther and set up equations based on specific relationships. If you notice, most of these relationships are going to be congruencies, but there is one here that's going to be um, supplementary. Okay? Um, so... Go ahead and finish this by writing a summary. Um, recall that the, the original question from the first part of the notes um, has to do with how, what kind of special angle relationships do you have if you have two lines cut by a transversal. And so it seems like your summary should mention two things. One, that sometimes you just have names if the lines aren't parallel. And two, if the lines are parallel, then you have special relationships. Um, once you're done doing that, um, I do have one quick sheet that's going to kind of be homework for you. Um, we're going to have a quiz on this um, on Thursday, so please make sure you're preparing. All right? um, have a great day, have a great morning, and I'll see you guys uh, on Thursday. Thanks.